when we have a look at Newton's famous laws of motion, what we're going to do is we're going to get them in verbal form, right? But then we're going to translate it to our language. We're going to get equations and all those kinds of things, variables and how they relate to each other. So in order to write those down and know what any of that is talking about, we need to introduce a whole bunch of terms and relate them to each other. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll start all the way back at the language we learned in two unit motion. Okay? Displacement, velocity, acceleration. So displacement, velocity, acceleration. Okay, so we just start with this guy, right? And we call this, we tend to name it x, okay? Now, when you define velocity, the easiest way to define it is in terms of displacement. You already told me it's dx on dt, right? So v is dx on dt. So far, so good, okay? Um, displacement, what units are those? We already mentioned this. This would be in meters, right? Which implies that for velocity, you're going to get, well, meters per second is the most common by far. Fine. Okay. Just like before, we define acceleration recursively, right, in terms of velocity. A is the change in velocity over time, right? So since what you're doing is you're adding another time unit on the denominator, that's why we have the familiar meters per second squared. Okay? Now, remember I said, for unit motion mechanics, is 3 unit motion plus mass, okay? So now let's think about mass over here. What happens to all of these things when we add on mass, okay? So we call mass M for mass, okay? And uh, even though there's lots of different units for length and lots of different time, we settle on one that's the most common sense. For mass, it's kilograms, okay? Kilograms. Now, if you think about something having velocity, and then you add mass to the mixture, okay, that's a whole new unit, right? Velocity as well as mass, right? So in other words, right, if you're running at, how fast do you run? Like, maybe 10 kilometers an hour, something like that, I'm not very fast, okay? You're running at 10 kilometers an hour, and I don't weigh very much, but if you've got like a, a, a truck that's going at 10 kilometers an hour, right, its mass is so much more, so, What's, what this quantity is, is larger, even though we're both moving at the same velocity, okay? So we call this unit, we call it momentum, okay? Now, we had x for displacement, v for velocity, a for acceleration, m for mass, clearly we cannot use m, so what most mathematicians settled on is p? Don't ask me, I'm just, I'm just telling you, okay? So, the idea is that if two objects have the same velocity, but they have different mass, then they will have different momentum. In fact, momentum is defined as mass times velocity. Okay? So momentum would be greater if you had the same velocity, but you increase the mass of something. Okay? Or if you want to think about it this way. Uh, like I said, I'm a pretty small guy, right? So if I was trying to tackle someone, and I was running at someone, okay? I would have to run much faster than a guy who's like, you know, big and stocky, could just like walk up to someone and say, you know, stop, okay? Whereas I'd, I'd have to like make a run up from like 100 meters over there. I had to get a lot more velocity, I had to make this bigger to compensate for my smaller mass, okay? So it's a product, that's how these fit together. Now, because it's a product of these units, the units are kilogram meters per second. That's a bit weird. But that's the quantity. It, it's a product, right? Now, in exactly the same way that you can consider what happens when you add, multiply, velocity by mass, you get the same thing for acceleration, right? And we call this a force. Okay? Thank goodness they picked a word with a unique letter on the front. Okay? So, that tends to be a capital F, right? Now, just like this is mass times velocity, what would you expect this to be? Mass times acceleration, okay? Now, just like we took these units, right? This would be, there's gonna be kilograms there, there's gonna be meters, and then there's going to be two lots of seconds, right? That's what it is, but that's super awkward. It's really weird. So instead of saying this, it gets a whole new name, named after the guy who really pioneered this. These things are called Newtons. Okay. 
So one Newton, keeping with all of the units that we've used here, one Newton is the force required, right, to move a single kilogram and accelerate it at one meter per second squared. That's what a Newton is, one of them. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about that so far? Do you see how it all fits together? I found, the first time I learned this, I found the table really helpful because it shows you the relationship between each. Okay? Now, just before I leave off this, um, some interesting things. When you look at this row in here, right? this is, this is the motion row. Can you see this? Yeah, I'm going to write it here anyway. Right? This is how something is moving. Okay? You can see motion. It's a visible thing. Right? If something is moving in front of you, you can see it happening. But this row... Right? This is not about motion, this is about force and acceleration. You can't see this. You can't see something that's accelerating or a force. Right? All the forces we know, like say gravity right, or the electromagnetic force, they can be exerting force or you know, making acceleration happen and you can't see what's making these things happen. Right? They're measurable but they're not visible. Okay? Um, the most fa famous example of this uh, was that a guy was, um, he was a botanist, and he was looking at, um, in a teles not a telescope, microscope, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> he was looking into a microscope, and he had all these bits of pollen in here, right? And they're all suspended on his, what, what's that glass thing called? Um, yeah, okay, a dish, right? And he noticed, right, actually, no, I think, I think I'm thinking of a slide, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So he's got all these little bits of pollen, right? And what he noticed was that they were moving. They're moving, and he thought, that's kind of weird. Why are they moving? All I've got is, is these bits of pollen. That's all I've put on there. Okay? How, what's causing them to move? Okay? And they were kind of jiggling about in this kind of, to him, random motion. Right? So the motion was visible, but he could not see what was pushing them around. Okay? It was Einstein who looked at this and he said, there's not like so. People thought, oh, it's just mysteriously, you know, floating around, that's just what they do. He said, no, there's got to be something in here. There's got to be things that are too small for the microscope to see that are kind of nudging them around, right? And hence the theory of these small things we call atoms, right? Lots and lots and lots of them, billions of them that are all colliding and pushing things around. Um, and the guy who, who saw this, the botanist, I think his name was Brown or Browning or something like that. So the motion of these little objects that are being pushed around by invisible forces, invisible to us, it's called Brownian motion, right? So you can go and look this up. So my point is that motion you can see, but forces you cannot. I'll give you another example, right? Have a look at me right now. Now just forget about my arms, right? <laughs> Vertically, horizontally, z-axis, okay? I'm not moving, right? I'm in the same spot, but there are forces acting on me. You just can't see them, right? I can think of two, right? There's something that's sticking me to the ground, namely gravity. gravity. Okay, so gravity is pulling down on my feet. You can't see it, but it's doing it, right? How come I don't fall through the floor? We'll, we'll get to it, but, but in, in the short of it, there's another force that's acting upwards, which is why I'm not moving anywhere, okay? So forces, you cannot see them. That's the important thing I want you to get.